Welcome to TNL Physics. This morning I am going to go through with you some key features of a wave and I'm also going to be telling you how you can plot two different types of wave like this. Now in previous videos I've gone over the difference between a transverse and a longitudinal wave. Just to recap, a transverse wave has its energy moving perpendicular to the direction of motion. So the wave is moving this way but the particles are going to be moving up and down and that's perpendicular. A longitudinal wave is that the particles are going to be moving in the same direction, so energy is going to be propagated in the same direction as the wave. So in this case, the wave is moving this way and the particles are going to be moving left and right. Now, for a transverse wave, it's very easy to get some information from it. Uh, longitudinal, much harder. So there is a way of actually plotting it onto a graph where we can actually get a lot of information from it. And this is a displacement time graph. What this means, if I was to look at a particle as a wave moves through it and plot its displacement from where it originally was and the time it happens, I would actually get a graph like this. Now, this, if you look at a transverse wave, it's pretty obvious how this can translate to this. As the wave moves through, the particle's displacement will be positive and negative. It will go positive and negative. With a longitudinal wave, it's a little harder to see, but you can, that my particle, as the wave goes through, is going to be moving closer together than further apart. And again, I can plot this displacement. Okay, I can plot this displacement on a displacement time graph. Now, from this graph, this information, which is a universal one that I can use for both transverse and longitudinal, what we can look here is we can look at many features of this wave. And first of all, I'm going to look at the thing known as the amplitude. The amplitude is measured from this line here, this equilibrium point. This is the point where the particle is at equilibrium. And what that means is basically that's where the particle was before the wave even turned up. Now the amplitude, or A, is defined as the maximum displacement from the equilibrium point. The reason I'm using the word displacement is, of course, the amplitude could be a positive number or a negative number. So using displacement, which is a vector, implies that I can talk about positive and negative. So the amplitude is basically the maximum displacement an object will go from the equilibrium point. Now, in a previous video when I was talking about wave equation, I have spoken about time period and frequency. And from this graph, for both of them, you can definitely do that. The fact that I can see the time it takes for one wave, this here is the time period. Okay, so it's the time for one wave. Please be aware when you're doing this on an exam, please be aware the time, it may be in seconds, it might be in milliseconds. So take a really, really good look at the uh, axes on this one. Of course, we've spoken about frequency before. We've mentioned that frequency is how many waves in one second also known as frequency is one over the time period here. <laughs> now, just to make you aware, this graph can give you all sorts of information. You can get the time period, etc., from it. But the one thing you can't directly get from this graph is the wavelength. So it's really important that you are aware of the axes on this one. So this is a graph to represent both transverse and longitudinal waves. And we can get information about an object's amplitude, a time period, and of course its frequency. But you can't 
get the wavelength directly from this. That's when you use formula like V equals F times lambda to get this if you have been given the extra information.